Sometimes when it's the dark of night and no one else is up doing anything, I lay in my bed desperately trying to sleep but unable to. Tossing and turning, I mull over everything I've done in my life as I try to figure out where I went wrong. I sit there pondering the great mysteries of the universe. Why are we here? Are we alone? And most importantly, why did I pick an army with a yellow paint scheme? What bout of madness drove me to this? And so, here I am, hoping that I can find a way to guide you to a wiser choice of Warhammer subfactions. When you buy Warhammer miniatures, you'll eventually come to a realization. You don't have any money anymore. But more pressing to this video, you'll come to realize that just because you chose your faction doesn't mean that you're done choosing your faction. Not at all. I mean, if you're a boring human being and don't care about painting or lore, you might be done, but this video is for people who actually have interest in the setting of the game they're a part of. Instead of spending disgusting amounts of money to be able to say you spent five hours of your life beating someone with toy army soldiers. Because, you know, you were that asshole who would always rage quit a game of Risk if you weren't allowed to pick Australia at the start. Anyways, yeah, subfactions. Did you know that there's a thousand Space Marine chapters in the galaxy of Warhammer 40k? That's a lot of goddamn options to pick from. And then on top of that, some of them have their own unique rules and models. Sure, that's the extreme end of the spectrum, but every Warhammer army has, to some extent, a lot of variability in their subfaction choices. Hell, in Age of Sigmar, sometimes choosing a certain subfaction can more or less lock you out of certain unit choices. At least if you want to play your army with any level of competitive usefulness. Sure, you don't have to use Pestilence units for 90% of your Skaven Pestilence army, but then most of your army is going to die at a virus-based friendly fire on a of the sick rats giving everyone else around them airborne aids. So I figured, I have minimal experience with the rules themselves, clearly that it makes me perfect to tell you what subfaction to pick. Think about it, someone with 30 years of playing Warhammer is gonna unload decades of bias and opinions based on additions that haven't seen the light of day since George Bush Sr. was in office. But since I barely know what I'm talking about, that means I'm entirely unbiased and everything here is objective and verified by scientific fact. Only the finest information revealed to my cousin five times removed in a dream here. So allow me to tell you exactly what to look for when you're picking a Warhammer subfaction. Primarily for 40k, but I'll include Age of Sigmar as much as I can without break and flow. The first thing to know is that there's three levels of subfaction following the 3Ms rule. Major, Moderate, and Minor. Moderate isn't the best word to use, but I really wanted to force the 3Ms thing. Each has ups and downs based upon criteria I've decided on my own because I'm making this up as I go. Major factions are the one you're going to see in the face of the unit boxes and major releases. Your Ultramarines, your Syme Hans, your Clan Pestilence, these guys are the marketable faces of their army. Or at least as marketable as some of these factions can be given that they look like they would probably smell. They're gonna get all the love. Beyond just being shown on boxes and stuff, though, these guys get actual rules and sometimes unique models. Hey Gilliman, how's it going? No, of course, this varies from army to army. Eldar Craft Worlds, for example, have fairly few models specific to each of the sub-factions. Not zero, you got Eldred, Prince Uriel, Real real urethra or whatever, but few enough to where choosing one of them probably isn't going to be the biggest decision in picking your craft world. Some, meanwhile, are goddamn insane with it. Each major space marine chapter has at least a few, which overall means choosing a certain space marine chapter can lock you out of certain models to use in the game. Same for Age of Sigmar. I keep using the Skaven as an example because between Eshen, Scryer, and Pestilence, you've got some choices to make depending on how you want to play your army. Moreover, each major sub-faction is going to have its own special rules. The Blood Angels are good at murdering things hand-to-hand -hand because they have magical PTSD and think everyone is the guy who killed their dad. Iron Hand can ignore wounds with a good roll because they think their dad died because he didn't have enough metal bolted onto him. Clan Pestilence are good in melee and causing wounds from close range and harming enemy units with plagues because they think their rat god dad wants them to give everyone the black death. Why is daddy issues the default games workshop goes to in creating a faction? Do you think they'll make an OnlyFans based faction next? Family issues aside, these guys can even get their own major supplements from time to time, making them stand out even more than they already do from the baseline army. Usually it's the space marines who get this treatment, but sometimes other armies do as well, like I and in a while back. Picking one of these armies also means you'll always be involved in major lore events sooner or later, or at the very least, Games Workshop won't forget that you exist. There's never going to be a major event involving the Stormcast or Space Marines that doesn't heavily feature the colors blue and gold. And even the lower end of major sub-factions still get mentioned every now and then and have fairly detailed backstories. Of course, they have downsides too, no sense pretending that they don't. Everything has a downside. The lottery seems great until the government takes half of it away and your family and friends all suddenly remember lawsuit-worthy grievances you've done to them. With major factions, their biggest downside is that they all have a niche that, for the most part, they're not really going to grow out. Of. An ultramarine isn't suddenly going to realize that, wait a minute, my primarch's a bit of a cunt. They might learn to think outside of the box of their faction's ideals, and in rare instances one of them might have a massive change of heart, but overall they're going to be all thinking relatively similarly. That faction has its box and they're not getting out of it. Major factions also have the least amount of wiggle room for developing your own lore for them. There's very few mysteries involved with them unless a mystery is in itself a major part of that army. You don't really get to invent a lot of side stories for them or your own version of a major character because those details are very much set in stone. You might be able to give them additional background detail, 
but there's nothing that's going to be released where, for example, it's revealed that Ultway was actually away from the Eye of Terror for a few hundred years. It's always been parked next to the thing until the Great Rift form. You can't unwrite that lore. You're playing something very much set in its ways, and if you don't like that and would prefer more room for your own stories, then you shouldn't pick one of the big-name sub-factions. Picking a major faction can also have some people judging you for being boring and not spending 500 hours developing your own paint scheme and lore for something no one has ever heard of. These people are assholes. If you think the Ultramarines are the best faction for you, then pick them. It's as simple as that. But unfortunately, you'll have to deal with these people eventually, so you may as well go into the army knowing someone is going to go. What? You didn't pick the Emperor's Chosen 876 Space Marine Chapter located in Subsector Wad the 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 in the Segmentum Orifice? Because people will gatekeep anything. I'm just complaining about people hating on the Ultramarines. Just ignore this last 10 seconds. Don't ignore, however, that for some armies you can't really get away from unit restrictions. Like, even if you invent an entire 500-page backstory and why your Skaven clan is based on Pestilence but still regularly allies with the Undead and other Skaven clans, you can't get away from mostly having to use Pestilence units. If you really want allies, you get Nurgle and that's your lot. So yeah, you can't cheat army requirements based on the fact you didn't pick a major sub-faction. Not really a problem with just the major ones, but something to keep in mind going forward. Moderates, those people who when you ask them where they want to eat, they refuse to commit to any one option and stubbornly insist do you make the final choice? What kind of sub-factions are they in Warhammer? These guys are the ones who get a lot of attention in supplementary material and the occasional mention in major events, but have noticeably less influence in universe than the major ones. As I've said, the Ultramarines are very much a major sub-faction. The Lamenters or Blood Ravens are very much moderate sub-factions. Everyone knows who they are and what they're up to, but in terms of major lore impact, we know they're less important than chapters like the Smurfs or the Blood Angels. Space Marines really are perfect for illustrating my points, aren't they? These guys will often have their own little series of media to themselves, such as once again the Blood Ravens and the Dawn of War games, and even if it's nothing as extreme as that, there will still be a decent amount of lore so you can tell what they're all about. For example, Craft World Miamera and their Imperial Armor book. Certainly not up to the level of Iandan or Ulthway, but they've got a decent bit of backing to their lore still. These guys do still also have some extra rules and maybe even a unique model to them on occasion. The Crimson Fist, for example, have a few rules unique to them and not just the Imperial Fist that they're descended from. At least that's what it seems like for my looking around, sorry if I'm feeding you lies and deceit. Meanwhile, going back to the Blood Ravens once again, they have Gabriel Angelos and a model that makes some of the Primarchs look pathetic. Nice little Roman Forum, Gilliman. I've got a big old rock and a massive hammer, and I'm better than you for it. Not all moderates will be lucky enough to get these, but some of them do, so it's worth taking into at least slight consideration. These guys also tend to be a bit more well-liked than either major or minor sub-factions. Like, if someone walks into a game store with a Lamenter's army, I cannot imagine anyone is going to make fun of them for it. They'll be too busy marveling over the fact someone tried to paint those shoulder pads of theirs. Seriously, look at that. Even if it's a douchey moderate faction like the Minotaurs, it's still cool to see something different on the tabletop. If you want to write your own lore, you have a lot more room to work with. It varies depending on exactly which sub-faction you're talking about, but overall you have more room to work with. Additionally, because these guys aren't always in the spotlight, they have a bit more leeway for character growth on both individual and collective levels. What are the downsides, though? Well, there's no gentle way to say this, so I may as well be blunt about it. Moderate sub-factions are the guys who are gonna be killed to raise the stakes and create drama. I mean, look at the Lamenters again. Their whole shtick is we are dying out and the galaxy is awful, but we will fight on regardless. They are the perfect army to finally kill off to raise the stakes of some threat or the other. I mean, are you gonna give a shit if the Emperor's shadows get obliterated? Do you have any idea who the Emperor's Shadows are? Because until about five minutes prior to starting the script, I didn't, and they can't call off a major sub-faction because that'd piss off too many people. Sure, GW will do things like break Bealtan in half or have Magnus glass the wolves' furry homeworld, but they aren't getting rid of them. The guys in the middle, though, yeah, they're in the danger zone. They also aren't totally open to creating your own lore for them. Like, the Lamenters are pretty well known, so just because they aren't in the spotlight all the time doesn't mean you have unlimited room to play around with their backstory. You certainly have more chances to write backstory and lore for these guys than a major sub-faction, but not total freedom. Moderate sub-factions are also occasionally used to prop up a more well-known sub-faction. Sometimes it's another moderate faction, sometimes it's a major one, but either way, you may or may not be the hype man for someone more popular. Lastly, expect updates for these guys on all fronts to be either rare or small. Rule-wise, you either won't get an update for years, or it'll be so inconsequential you might as well have not gotten an update one way or the other. Lore-wise, expect one of two things. Your lore is either written in stone, and no matter how cool it is, you're getting an update once a decade, or every time something big happens, you'll get precisely one and a half sentences about what the group is up to. Finally, we come to the minor sub-factions, the little guys that make up about 90% of the armies in-universe and about 9% of the armies out-of-universe. Theoretically, there's 1,000 Space Marine chapters in the galaxy. According to Mainline Games Workshop War, there's about 20 that ever actually do anything. The other presumably just sit around and sing the campfire song song all day long. But that doesn't have to stop you from picking one of these bastards for your army, so why the hell would you do this? Well, the biggest reason to me is that you are essentially playing canon homebrew. Because these guys have basically zero lore behind them beyond a name and a sentence or two description, you have all the room you want to work with. 
let's take those Emperor's Shadows fellows from earlier. All that there really is about them is Japanese-inspired space marines. So if you want, you can be stereotypical samurai fighting for honor with the Bushido Code in space. Or you can be World War II-era Japan and commit all sorts of fun war crimes. Make your Fortress Monastery Unit 40731. Each are equally valid interpretations, and only one of them will get you thrown out of a game store for being a terrible human being. And maybe this is just my opinion, but these guys are safe from any major disasters occurring to them. Because no one ever notices them, no one is going to throw them into the fire for the narrative. You are safe from the plot. Do you want to be an insufferable hipster with a paint scheme no one has ever seen on the tabletop before? Well, here you go, no questions asked. Well, realistically, many questions are asked, but rest assured you can answer all of them with a smug arrogance of a nerd who has out-niched another nerd. How do you go about finding one of these obscure armies? Allow me to use the Skaven as an example. Go to 1d4chan, go to the Skaven page, and then open the Clans of the Skaven menu. Congratulations, you have all that you need to make a minor sub-faction army. Just, uh, scroll past the gallery section without looking at it. You will see things that only prove how far man has fallen. As for the downsides, well, they're more or less exactly what you'd expect. Want to have any presence in major events? Well, you won't. Sucks to suck. You may be safe from the catastrophes of Warhammer, but that's only because you weren't invited to the murder party like everyone else, you fucking loser. And of course, you maybe have one named character. Maybe. And they will not have a model. They will never have a model. Ever. You are not going to be acknowledged by Games Workshop or anyone else. You will never have cool and interesting rules unique to you and you alone. You are unknown. You are nothing, and you will always be nothing. You come from dust, and to dust you shall return along with your army of nobodies. Also, you gotta do all the legwork for the lore, and if you aren't in the kind of thing, then a minor sub-faction isn't for you. Like at all. I don't know why you'd even be considering this sort of thing if you don't want to flex your creative muscles a bit, truth be told. As a final aside, some armies are gonna have more types of each sub-faction than others. The Space Marines have a shit ton of each, whereas the Orcs are looking a bit slimmer on that front. Consider this one picking an army if you really want to get into a minor or moderate sub-faction, as your options may be limited. So, there's my guide to picking your Warhammer sub-faction. Is this something you should seriously consider using? Yes, I am certain of it. I have never in my life given out bad advice or made a bad decision, I can assure you. Just ask my Discord about my sandwich making skills, they will tell you all about how I'm a master of this sort of thing. Thank you of course to my channel members, guiding me to a bright future of amateurly painted minis and fueling my plastic crack addiction with ill-gotten gains. If you want me to make more of this garbage, consider subscribing or becoming a member. I don't really care if you hit the like button, I don't understand what it does anymore beyond boosting my ego. No one can see the dislike ratio bar anymore, so it's essentially a vestigial feature. Thank you for watching and take care out there. A final point in this video is that Eldar sub-factions are all the best, because Eldar are the best, and I desperately want Lilith Hesperx to step on my ball.